on where the beaver chewed at it. And it's mm -hmm. like almost half chewed through. Yep. Um, on one of those branches, we could reach it with a tall ladder. Mm -hmm. It has moss like three or four inch, probably half, not half a foot, but like five and a half inches. Okay, well let's go get some. Axel. Yeah? Do you know what uh, symbiosis means? Have you ever heard that term? Like symbiotic? Like symbiotic, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no. You don't know what it means? Can you think of when you've heard it? You've heard it before, you said symbiotic, so that means you've heard it before, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what context you heard it in? A nature thing. Then? A nature thing, okay, yeah, so you're watching a nature show. And what were they talking about? Different kinds of animals. So yeah, symbiosis is basically, uh, the word means, um, literally it's from the, uh, the Greek uh, uh, sim, S-Y-M, that's the root. And it means um, together, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then also the word bios, meaning life. So symbios, meaning a living together. Biotic. Mm -hmm. Bio biology, it's like studying the study of life. Symbiosis, it's a living together. There's a Pokemon called something Osis, and mm -hmm. it's two. Um, at the stage one, it's, I forgot the name, but. All roads lead to Pokemon. With no, listen. Um, I forgot the first name, but it's a psychic type and it's this little blob uh -huh. with a face on it. And it evolves into um, something osis. And mm -hmm. it's two of the blobs, except one of them is smaller and it's attached to the first one. Mm -hmm. And then the third stage is just one big blob and it's called Reclunticus. So, symbiosis is a living together of things. And so, there's different kind. So, science has, um, has uh, defined a few different kinds of symbiosis, symbiotic relationships. And there is one called mutualism, and one called commensalism, and one called para parasitism. So one of them is like me, you, and mommy and River living together, symbiosis? Yes, uh-huh, right. Okay, yeah, that's a good example, uh-huh. And then one of them is mm -hmm. animals? Well, okay, so it's not exactly like that. So it's where different creatures are living together. Different species are living together. So like me and Faven, and you and mommy and Yes, like that's, a, that's an example, uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, humans and dog, they, that is a symbiotic relationship, and science would, uh, most scientists would consider that to be a mutual symbiotic relationship. And like humans and cats. Mm-hmm, yeah. And humans so and, you mutual, know the term man's best friend? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Right. So a, a mutual mutualistic symbiotic relationship is where both parties benefit from the relationship, right? And so uh, when it comes to us and Faven, right, humans and dogs, uh, there was a mutual benefit there and that's how dogs evolved, uh, or wolves evolved with humans to become dogs. They, humans bred them to be dogs, essentially. That relationship resulted in dogs and it's a mutualistic uh, symbiotic relationship Dogs get a lot out of the relationship because we keep them alive, we feed them, we give them shelter and protection. We give them love. And, like and we give them love and affection, <laughs> and they give us back, uh, well, any number of things, depending on the relationship. They can, for like, um, some dogs, if they, they're hunting dogs, they hunt for they you. Hunt if for they're you, huskies, right? they mm -hmm. can, like, pull they can you pull on dog sled. sleds. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that would Guard be dogs. considered generally, generally to be, now some could be parasitic, meaning if you're abusive to your dog, it's, that can be a parasitic relationship. Uh, so the parasitic is where one party benefits, but the other doesn't. And so, generally speaking, humans and dogs both benefit from the relationship. But there can be individual relationships where the human's abusing the dog, um, and that's parasitic because the humans are only getting the benefit and the dogs are the dog is not, and they're hurting it, and eventually maybe they'll kill it or something, which is not good. Probably the most unique symbiotic relationship between humans and animals is dogs and that is encapsulated in the term man's best friend
So all the moss growing on these trees that we are gonna be using for our roof of our shack over there to help protect us from the elements while we build our log cabin because rain in the there's winter a, is coming. There's a symbiotic relationship between the moss and the you trees. You got it, give me five. Like, Nice. The moss benefits nice. off of living off of the trees, like mm -hmm. the tree keeps it alive. Mm -hmm. But the tree benefits from having some protection. Okay, so a little bit. There, well, there you go. So that's really interesting, right? So science, which is just all science is, it's it's groups of individuals, or maybe in just only individuals bringing a collection of ideas together and checking those ideas and theories and claiming them as what we call facts, which is a something that we think is so real that we're going to make a statement about it that it's like true, right? And so that's what science is. It, it's a collection of, of ideas that have been vetted by many, many, many different uh, highly intelligent people. We'll put it that way. And so science considers the relationship between moss and trees to be a commensalism. <clears throat> and so like, um, it, it means that one party benefits from the relationship and the other party neither benefits nor is hurt or, or uh, you know, it has the opposite of a benefit from the relationship. And so science believes in general, I guess, meaning most people in the scientific community seem to agree that trees do not benefit from the moss that grows on them, generally speaking. And specifically with this moss we see here in the Pacific Northwest. But moss benefits from the relationship with the tree. So what do you think? Does that make sense to you? Because just a second ago you said that the tree benefits somehow. Um, and you kind of, you saw clearly why the moss benefits, because it's a place to grow, right? Mm -hmm. But you couldn't necessarily, you seem to not know exactly why the moss and the tree, ha the tree was benefiting from the relationship. But the moss, um, like on that big leaf maple, mm -hmm. the moss protects it more. Like You think so? Protects yeah, it from what? Yeah, because the moss is so, th like from beavers, sort of, a mm -hmm. little bit maybe. From beavers? Like um, beavers don't really eat moss. They don't like uh, that's the true, it. but the beavers could just push the moss out oh, of the yeah. way and eat the bark. I think that you're right in thinking that the, that the tree must benefit somehow, but it's not so obvious how exactly the tree benefits. So I actually agree with Axel, and I think that, I think that science can be kind of narrow-minded sometimes. And I think it has to be, because in order to make some kind of statement, you have to say something. And so, what science says generally is that we've been studying trees and moss for a very long time, <laughs> and really we haven't. It has been a very short period of time, <laughs> um, scientifically speaking, maybe a couple hundred years. Uh, and so, or maybe we'll say a thousand, but which is a very short period of time evolutionarily. And in that time, we really haven't been able to find all that, what an obvious benefit, the moss growing on the tree. But to me, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not benefiting it. And I actually think that by definition, I think that the tree definitely, by definition, benefits from it. We just can't see why. And to me, the evidence in that is that these trees have evolved with this moss in these regions, these temperate rainforest type regions, for many, many years, millions of years. And I don't think that kind of relationship can form over that long a period of time. And these trees still exist. These species of trees still exist. These big leaf maples in the Pacific Northwest, this moss loves to grow on these big leaf maples. I don't think that it could have evolved over that long of a period of time. This relationship could have evolved and it not somehow have helped in the evolution of these trees in keeping their species alive and, and, and still living in the world today. I think by definition, there's Wait, some I, sort of good I think I thing. might know one of the we reasons. We just can't necessarily see it. So what do you think? You know how plants, like through their stems and stuff, like cactuses, mm -hmm. and most plants can soak up it through their stems? Ah. Like the moss might keep the water in longer. You're so like right. if you're in the middle of summer and it's like uh -huh. super dry and the trees are drying up and it rains once, that's it only enough for help. a little bit. But that's going to help to keep it um, wet. Dude, Axel, give me five. 
give me five. That is what's called a theory, a scientific theory, okay? So I love being a scientist. I am a scientist. And it's funny because you might think, well, Exit Tech, you're pretending like you're a scientist. Well, no, I am not pretending I'm a scientist. I, I could say that I am a scientist as much, <laughs> as much as people could say that they are this or that. Because what like, are we're we We're scientists really? like Who the backyard really? scientists. We're not really good at science, but <laughs> we're just testing stuff. Yeah, yeah. So like I, The backyard scientists, he just I, tests theories. I'm going like, through the scientific method, which is making an observation, and then based on that observation creating a theory, testing that theory, and then coming up with a conclusion. I think that is a great observation agent acts. And this is what I love about life being a mystery. Life is an adventure, life is a mystery. The best mysteries have to do with people and relationships with people. But I love creation, I love the natural world, and I love observing it. And I think you can learn a lot about relationships between people by observing relationships between creatures and uh, living things in the natural world. So, big leaf maples, you're right, Agent X, they need a lot of water. They're, 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 they're heavy water takers, right? Um, they, they need a lot of water. And so their roots grow kind of deep. Maybe over many millions of years in these temperate rainforests, we have a dry season, a really heavy dry season. And maybe those maples benefit a lot from the moss in the really dry season helping those um, maples to retain their water really well. Maybe that's true. Huh. Now I wonder it, like, how, help, it helps how, It helps them to become cactuses. Cacti. So, so, sort of, yeah, to retain the moisture. So I wonder how we would test that theory. That's a theory. We have to test it though. And one way to test a theory that I can immediately think of is I can't think of a really, I, I, most really big big leaf maple trees that I am aware of up here in the Pacific Northwest, they're growing in areas where they can have heavy, heavy moss loads on them. And the Look other right big there. leaf maple trees, See, I, right I noticed they don't seem to be as big. See that one right there? Mm -hmm. Moss is already starting to grow A thick lot, on it. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. The and younger so, ones, the younger ones, they don't seem to have any moss, but the moss is yes, already starting right. to grow. Agent really Axe is right. The younger big leaf maple trees and the smaller ones don't seem to have as much moss on them. The giant ones almost always have a ton of moss on them. Now that doesn't necessarily prove that, but that's an interesting uh, observation and I think that's a great theory. And so, um, I don't know, I don't know, but I, we're going to keep observing and asking these questions and I, I know and I believe that we will come up with answers. It and doesn't take I, away I the sunlight. So the bark of the tree doesn't absorb sunlight. Yeah, the bark of the tree I don't think necessarily needs sunlight. Although, you I know, think there's it probably absorbs something there. Water. It's the leaves mainly that uh, the Need sunlight some. needs. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. and the licorice ferns, um, they benefit mm -hmm. off of the moss. Yeah, Agent Axe is talking about this fern that grows on the moss in the trees. Yeah. And so the licorice fern and the moss have a symbiotic relationship too, because I don't see that licorice fern growing anywhere just on the bark Wait, of the tree. Um, it's and always on They both moss. benefit a little bit because mm. the licorice fern holds it together. Like if yeah, there's licorice there fern, you go. see Maybe. licorice fern all over that, it's uh -huh. holding the moss together. Who knows, who knows? We'd have to do a lot more observing and looking into things to figure that out. Now, I think that certainly the scientists who study this moss over long periods of time certainly know more about it than me and so I don't want to assume that I'm right here but I'm with Agent X. I think that there is a a, a relate I think that there is a positive relationship something good happens something good happens uh, from the moss to the tree too I really do think that um, uh, but maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong um, but I think by definition that it's evolved over this long a period of time together and the big leaf maples are still alive, uh, still exist here uh, as a species, I think that, that by definition there's some sort of good relationship, even if we can't see it. And that's the thing about like, science. There's a symbiotic relationship in the ocean between those fish, the sea turtles and the fish, because the fish eat the algae mm -hmm. and stuff off of yep. the sea turtle's shell, and yep. the fish, the sea turtle benefits by not having a rotten shell, so That's like true. sharks can mm -hmm. bite right through yeah, it. Yeah, there's many different types of and symbiotic what, relationships. And, but, mm -hmm. and the fish get food. So that's the thing about science, is the science is never absolutely settled. Because once the science has been settled, once someone says, 
this science is settled. That's the point at which science becomes religion. And that is not a good thing. All right, everyone. Well, that has been an awesome talk, a scientific talk. Agent Pikachu, I mean, Agent Axe. That licorice fern is pretty strong. Chew up that bit of the stem right there. Chew it up. It tastes like alcohol. Oh. What? Yeah, that's potent. That's really potent. In fact, I think you can make like alcohol tinctures or tinctures using alcohol with that. Get in the go-kart. Let me see you. Wait, um, <laughs> I have to brush this off. Okay. He's, he's so big, he's using, he's taking my seatbelt. Yeah. So this is our big furry friend that's gonna ride in a go kart with Axel. It's like um, Bigfoot. It's, it's Bigfoot, yeah. It's the Bigfoot, Bigfoot's kid. It's Bigfoot's, yeah. I don't know. That's that's Bigfoot. I think that's big enough to be Bigfoot. Mm. Can you put your seatbelt on? Mm. <laughs> you want me to drive it? Mm. No, I can't because I have to. I have to get on top of there to make sure it doesn't fall off. All right. Well, let's see if this works. The dog's always chasing something. She was sick in our last video, but she's feeling better now, I guess. All right, well, hopefully we make it. <laughs> yeah, so I did some research on this moss and in the Ho Rainforest, which is uh, you know very similar to our neck of the woods here in Western Washington, the temperate rainforest, big leaf maples can carry up to a ton, a ton, that is 2,000 pounds of this moss. Big leaf maples are the largest carriers of these moss by far in the Pacific Northwest. And they are gigantic sometimes. That big leaf maple, mm -hmm. way over there, the huge, gigantic one, yeah. where the beaver chewed at, uh -huh. that one probably carries about a ton of moss. Uh, maybe, maybe. Well, I'd say maybe. Uh, no, that probably that probably has. I would estimate a little over 15, a thousand pounds, yeah. like fifteen hundred, yeah. maybe. Yeah, fifty. Maybe, maybe at the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so I'm putting this moss the heaviest thickest moss directly over the fireplace and the seating area and the reason for that is because it's the area that i'm going to need way more rain protection i did not expect when i started to peel this stuff off of the tree it to be this thick in certain areas this moss is so thick it's like sod it's it's like sod some of you may know what sod is it's with it's the, the grass uh, when they cut it up kind of by the roots with the dirt still in there in the roots. And you can lay it out and plant it on your lawn. That's how thick this is. It is so thick. And it, 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 all, it has topsoil on it almost. It's, it's wild. It it's created, like putting grass on your roof. Yeah, it's like putting a bed of grass on your roof. It's so awesome. <laughs> I'm excited about this. This is so cool.
Okay, agents, so I'm gonna continue to uh, get some moss for this roof. I'm gonna try to find a big leaf maple that's actually close by here. We had to transport that there's, really far with the go-kart. Well, um, there's one that's right, the big one, and yeah, like, you could just get along. I need stick. a ladder for that. I don't wanna, that big leaf maple is a very special tree, so mm -hmm. I don't really wanna mess with it right now. Mm -hmm. But we are hungry, and it's getting about dinner time. And so Chef Axel, Chef Axel, is going to cook us some food. But this time, uh, what is on the menu, we decided is gonna be a surprise for me. So Chef Axel is going to get all the ingredients together for our surprise <laughs> meal. So I'm excited about this. And so where are you headed? Are you gonna get something from the garden? Garden. Okay, awesome. All right. All right, well, I'm gonna get to working on the maple, uh, maple uh, moss roof. Go get some food, Chef Axel. I did a good bit of research on the moss that grows on these big leaf maples around here in the Pacific Northwest because I didn't want to take the moss off of the trees in this manner if it was going to seriously affect the life of the tree, if it was going to seriously injure that tree or hinder its living and growth. And when I found that it was a commensary, I think that's how you pronounce it, sort of symbiotic relationship, what that told me is that whatever effect it has, it's not so great of an effect that if I take the moss off of the tree, the tree's like gonna die or something like that. The tree will live on and the moss will repopulate on the tree and it's gonna be okay. But all the same, I do believe still that this moss has some sort of positive benefit for these trees, at least in the situations in which it's growing on the trees. And I just think that science hasn't really learned exactly what that positive relationship is, however small the positive benefit is for the tree. So I was kind of joke, making a joke earlier about, you know, this, uh, this uh, moss creating its own topsoil. But look at this. This is an earthworm. This earthworm is living in the topsoil that this moss has created. This is truly... Truly incredible here. That's amazing. So this is a very, very special place here. As some of you agents may know what this is. This is the gravestone of Agent Molokai being the twins that Agent Trinity lost. Um, the pregnancy she lost, wild and true. And uh, this is a very special place to us. Uh, and it happens to be just below these big leaf maples right here. Beautiful trees, beautiful trees. The best branches are the ones that are kind of straight across for this moss I found. And that one is a good example right there. That's a great, great tree right there to get moss off of. But I don't have a ladder, so I need to find a way to get up there. So getting down is almost always harder <laughs> than getting up. <laughs> You've done it now, Agent Tex. Oh. All right. Okay. Ooh. Oh. 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 So this moss also makes it very difficult to climb <laughs> this tree. But this is the thickest 
I have seen yet. That is so thick. So I'm overlapping these larger pieces, sort of like you would do a shingle, so that if water is running a bit, it will not run straight down into the fort there. <laughs> It'll hopefully run off more. I just got the camera from the office, and now I am going to make food for dinner. certain type of stew that I don't know how to make. First ingredient, cabbage. Get my knife. That. They're in the inner layer of juicy cabbage. Get that. We have enough juicy cabbage. And now we need regular potato. Just like uh, this. Rinse it off, put it in there. Rinse it off, put it in there. So I have all the potatoes rinsed off. Now I'm going to get some celery. This is broadleaf sorrel. Get a leaf, chop it off right at the stem, right there too and right at the tip. This little middle part is the good stuff. This is Italian parsley. Just cut it off right where those little deals are, like that. And you just put all that in the bucket. And then um, the last ingredient, bandit leeks. These are called green onions. You pick them off, they're still green. These are just little baby leeks. Baby onion. The green part. That's all we need. We need one more of all of those. Just that, that. The hose to rinse them off. That will make a little, little good soup. I'm gonna grab a little bit more cabbage. Except this time I'm gonna grab purple cabbage. This one right where it's bad. So what you do to get a little bit of it is Take off that one leaf. So what I'm gonna do is get it like that. Just get a big slice out of it. And we have a little bit of purple cabbage too. Now we will be going after we grab um, one more thing. This. Dough flour. That is it, I believe. Now we will be going there. We will be having no meat in the soup, just vegetables. Looky what we got here. Agent Axe outdid himself. Cow. 
cabbage, cabbage, potatoes, sorrel, celery. Agent Tex is excited. Agent Tex is very excited. Pot of grease and oil and dirt. Oh, how did that thing float? 15 pounds or 10 pounds. Like, no, it doesn't exactly float when you do that. But anyway, floating or not, there it goes. Or not. If it sinks and it's in the middle of the pond, well, I just realized that it's not a good idea. So I'm going to jump. Oh. Oh. Would you rather get in the floats? Hey. What you doing? I was testing a theory. What's your pot? Theory? floats. The pot floats? Yeah. No way, that's cast iron. That's super heavy. It floats. Did you have to go and get it after you dropped it? In the kayak. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Let's use like that. Now she's like, <laughs> whoa, what is she doing? Yeah. What the? I don't know, but if that isn't a symbiotic relationship, I don't know what is. It's so beautiful. A boy and his dog. Hi, come on. Hi, Fivin. Hi. I'm so glad she's feeling better. Why? Well, I'm just gonna rinse it out real quick, though. Look. It does float. So, what is on the menu, Chef Axel? I saw your garden harvest there. That looks delicious. Mmm. Surprise menu. Surprise. Okay. Oh. Are we gonna use the water? Yep. Oh, yeah, this uh, I got some celery. I saw that. That looks so good. So good. I only got like half. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. No. <laughs> he just dumped the water on the fire. <laughs> you put my fire out. <laughs> it's no. okay. It didn't. It's fine. It, it'll come back. It'll come back. Now I put the fire out. <laughs> no, level. Not not two legs and one leg. Uh, we go. Chef Axel, I am the chef's helper. What do you I You need, need a cutting knife like this. Okay. You need cutting knife. Cutting knife? Got it. The you vegetables. need real quick clean your cutting knife off. Okay, clean. No dirt on it. Clean my cutting knife off on my clean pants. Done. Check. What next? Chop the celery into pieces about. Okay. Pieces about that big. That big. Okay. All right. There we go. So, for any of you who have been following our videos for a long period of time, both the Axel Show, South House TV, any of those, you probably know that Agent Axe is a big foodie. Food is an extremely important part of his life. He gets it from his parents. That's for sure. We spend an immense amount of time obsessing over food because food is is life it's sustenance and um the, the fuel that is... you put into your body is the energy you're going to get in the life that we have here um and so that energy is extremely important when it comes to um our uh our, our core motto it's always been um to use your imagination, to live your life and love everyone around you. That's a message that I've always said at the end of every, you know, pretty much every single video that we've done on the Axel Show and other channels. And that motto has evolved over time. And life's an adventure. Love is the key. Love is the key. And the key to having the greatest amount of energy to love people around you. And have it a, that we found one of the big keys is definitely the food that we eat. And uh, there's, there's a lot more to it than that, 
But uh, when it comes to physical things you could do in the physical reality, food is definitely extremely important. Wait, um, you drop the rest of that and I'll go get the next sticks, okay? Uh, or the okay. Paleo Valley. All right, so you're gonna go get the uh, jerky sticks? Yeah, wait, can you turn the go cut on? Ugh. So as you may notice here, the cutting on a rock, there's dirt all over this rock. Who knows what earth, birds landed on here, animals. That's something that our ancestors lived with a lot. And uh, we're not the cleanest family in the world. Kind of do that on purpose because um, we want our guts to have the bacteria that they need to thrive. Oh, oh. Now, Shafaxel did not tell me to dump this in here, but I'm assuming that's what he wants me to do. Stop, 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 stop! Stop, stop, stop! Soup, soup, soup. Is that the jerky? Yep, soup. So, Shafaxel, was I supposed to dump the soup into the pot? No. No? No. Aww. No! It was boiling though. You have to get the meat. Come, come. <laughs> um, we have to do it fast. But actually the vegetables take longer to cook. So. Oh, because these are The cooked. meat's already cooked, yeah. <laughs> I haven't right. had these in so, so long. So what do we got here? We got Nick sticks and- One of each, one of each. Paleo time. Valley. Um, this is a new brand of grass-fed beef jerky sticks that we've really been liking lately. Um, and uh, it's actually. But this actually, is not uh, an advertisement. Yeah, it's not. A, yeah, this is not an advertisement. So these are actually fermented. Uh, they resemble. Uh, <laughs> fermented? Yeah, they're fermented. The meat is kind of fermented a little bit. Nick sticks is not like that. So uh, we really like Nick sticks. Uh, they've kind of given us jerky sticks in the past, and uh, uh, we weren't given these by Paleo Valley. Maybe we'll get them to give us some. But um, we like having options when it comes to our bee sticks. Um, good food is an absolute must for us. So when we're on the go, we've got to have some good quality fat and protein. And uh, these uh, beef jerky sticks, grass-fed beef jerky sticks, are the way to go for us. <sighs> Look what we got, Agent X. We got this covered a lot. There's still some space over here. Yeah, I thought you said we would be done with it by two. I, I thought we were gonna do the whole thing today too. But it is getting late and I don't think we're gonna be able to make it. Um, but that's okay because we got another week until the rains come. And boy is it gonna rain. <laughs> in a week it shows gonna rain about every single day. And that's how it is up here in the Pacific Northwest and that's why we really gotta make sure that we Hey, it's whistling, it's whistling on It's whistling? Yeah, that. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's look in. You wanna look in? Okay. Mm -hmm. mm, look. Oh, oh, yeah. That looks good. Wow, oh, it smells good too. Uh, It'll be done soon, right? I think so. I think that uh, just a few more minutes here and those potatoes will be done. The potatoes are the main thing we need cooked all the way. All right, you wanna check on the potatoes? Yep. Done. Yay. Right here. Yeah, that's good. All right. Ooh, so what do I do now, Chef Axel? Put these yeah. in? Yep. Right. Put all these in. Shake it in. Look at that color. It looks so good. That looks so delicious. It looks like a rainbow. You're batoning? I guess so.
Well, I was about to start to try to make a spoon because we don't have any spoons to eat our soup. Can you try again with a different thing? Uh, I think this will take a bit too much time. I've never made a wooden spoon before. I think we're gonna have to figure something else out. Okay, so <laughs> this is the lid to our kettle. And I think this will actually make a great spoon. It's like a, it's like a small bowl. <laughs> oh, it leaks. Ah. Okay, well, anyways, uh, this will work fine. Oh, I'm so excited. Can I try the first bite? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mmm. Oh, so, oh, oh, yes. Oh, that is good. Oh, that is the best. Mmm. Oh, that is immensely delicious. Immensely. Mm. <laughs> immensely delicious. <laughs> Agent Axe. I want to bite. Want this to. is a winner. Give me five. Chef Axel. Chef Axel. He is ah! incredible, and I'm so glad that he had this idea. Uh, he said that today was going to be a surprise. Instead of me kind of getting something set up for him to make, he just decided to surprise me with something, and I am surprised. I didn't happy. even know what I was going to make. He didn't even know, but he used his imagination to make a lovely meal, and I'm proud of you. Great work. All right, everyone. Well, we are going to finish eating the soup. You like it? Is it good? Is it good? We're going to finish eating the soup, and um, and uh, we have gotten a lot of work done today, I think. Daddy, we need to make more like of like this in, like, that big pot. Oh, yeah. Well, we are so glad that you all joined us. Remember, life is an adventure, and love is the key. Love isn't easy. Life isn't easy. Life is hard. Life is... Oh, the leak adds the perfect sweetness. Oh, it does? Mm -hmm. I didn't know leeks would add sweetness. Mm. Life can be immensely difficult sometimes. Um, some of you may know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. No matter what your age is, no matter how old you are, life can be very, very difficult. And believe me, I know that. Um, and uh, me and Agent Trinity, we both know that. Agent Axe even sort of knows that. <laughs> He's had a hard life at times. Um, but uh, we're, we're trying to keep him from that. But remember, no matter how difficult life gets, love is the key. Love is the key. And remember, you are loved. You are loved by the one who created you, who caused you to exist. That's what I believe. All right. Well, until next time, Agent Tech's out. We're going to continue to build this cabin. I think next time I want to get the first logs in here. That's what I want to do. That's it. It's decided. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the first logs in here. Yep. Also and, finish uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> and we're preparing for the zombies here. So we're preparing for the digital world and the real world. And um, zombies are people too. <laughs> we can all be zombies sometimes. So zombies love are everyone in the around you, world. including the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> like Minecraft. Well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Minecraft. Minecraft zombies. You just punch them. You just punch them. Yeah. yeah. And eventually they go poof. Yeah. And they go. Poof. <laughs> That's not how it works in the real world. <laughs> You don't just punch the zombies, and that, that actually don't just go poop. makes it worse, yeah. You don't just yeah. go poop. When, when I was a zombie, if I got punched, it, it kind of made it worse, so. Um, you know, I was a zombie once, and I was loved. I was loved, even when I was a zombie, so, anyways. All right, Agent Tech's out. All right, Adventure Agent families, well, hopefully you enjoyed that episode, and remember, you can get early access to all of our adventure agent videos and also watch every single one of our family friendly videos on our new adventure agents app check the link in the description down below to see how you can get access to it our app is a safe and ad-free place that your family can consume all of our family's content and don't forget to check out theadventureagents.com shop to get all of your adventure agents clothing badges and our new survival gear, which includes our Adventure Agents survival knife, fire starter, flashlight, backpacks, and so much more. We'll see you on the next adventure.